the perception insanity. <laughs> I thought I'd call it that bit of a catchy title, but alas, very true. Very true. It might be catchy, but it's not clickbait. I don't use clickbait. Why I say the perception insanity is because perception itself, when we look at perception of anything, um, the Buddha talks about perception in, in Pali. The word is uh, sanya. Uh, and I guess the closest word is perception. But for some reason, there's a kind of mix with, with memory. Right? It's like perception, memory. So some texts say it's memory. Some texts say it's uh, perception. Some say it's both. So basically, uh, I think what the word sanya is, it's kind of like a, a remembering a remembering and a way and, a, and like a, a way of seeing things. It's, it's like a perception at the time. So, for example, uh, if you're at a football match, right, and one is sitting on the north side, and when a person sitting, you're sitting on the north side, someone's sitting on the south side, in the east and west. Usually, each football field is is divided. Although there's round ones, but you you get what I'm saying. So, you get a different perception of the game you get a different perception of the game, right? Wherever you sit. I mean, I remember as a, as a young as a young lad uh, going to the local <clears throat> rugby league and soccer matches and changing seats all the time to get a different angle on the game, a different perspective. And this is the problem, the limits of our eyes, the limits of our ears and uh, the limits of our thinking is we only get a certain perception. We don't ever get the 360 degree perception uh, of anything really because we only get to see the angle that we see, right? So a, an example of this also is memories. Like when you when you try to remember something or when you something comes to mind, I noticed that <clears throat> at the time of the experience, you have a certain experience or any experience and then you bring up that, and then it becomes, after the experience, after that moment, it becomes, now it becomes uh, committed to memory, right? So then you have a perception of that experience. So, so I hear, you know, I hear it all the time, and I used to do it too. You go, I get, for example, let's use just a common example that we can all relate to. Like you go to a certain restaurant, I think, wow, that's the best steak I've ever had, or the best uh, hot uh, chocolate cake I've ever had. Right, and you remember that, so you I, you go back to that same place, wanting that same experience. That till one day, you go to another place or another country, and you try the chocolate cake again, and it's even better. So now your perception has changed of what the best chocolate cake is, and I think this happens all the time. There's the the other thing also, the the wide perception on on the view of the world. It's kind of like when you're five years old. You see the world in a certain way at 10 years old, at 15 years old, at 20, 30, 40, and now I'm in my 50s, right? And then there's uh, before having children, after having children, being a grandparent, being a parent, being a grandparent, uh, being single, being bachelor, being divorced, being not divorced, uh, you know, all these experiences, uh, like business, being successful, then not being successful, right? I'm going bankrupt or... Think, I'm not saying I've had all these experiences, but I'm saying these experiences change our perceptions all the time. And I think our perceptions change uh, rapidly because the Buddha talks about perception as being anatta, uh, anichang. Well, all three, anichang, dukkang, anatta. Uh, dukkang, right, stress. See, a lot of, a lot of people uh, talk about dukkha as suffering. Uh I tend to throw three words at dukkha because I don't think you, the most exact definition, according to Ajahn Jeff, um, the last time I checked a few years back, it might have changed now, but Ajahn Jeff uh, uh, Tanis, Tanisaro from California, who's a, who's, who has a lot of authority in the Dhamma Yut tradition, in, in the English Dhamma Yut tradition, Western Dhamma Yut tradition, particularly because he writes a lot of literature and has written a lot of um, books on, on discipline and Vinaya. And he defines 
Ajahn, Ajahn defines uh, dukkha as stress. It's actual stress, just constant stress, right? Because things are changing all the time. There's no stability, right? There's no stability. It's kind of like, for example, we don't, if we don't know when we're going to die. We don't know the exact date of when we're going to die. We don't know when that will come. It's always a mystery, right? And because of that, it's hard to make plans, right? Could be tomorrow, could be the next day. Like I said in a previous video, last week here, there was um, there was there was a major tragedy not far from here, right? And uh, you know the, the, those thirty eight people that passed away, right? The day before they weren't thinking, oh, tomorrow I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be murdered, right? So it I mean that is stressful, that is stressful. Now the old term is suffering that goes back all the way to uh, the first. Uh, interpretations and, and and I guess translations uh, from uh, various English authors about a hundred years ago or more now maybe in the 18th century now so anyway they said, called it suffering and I mean suffering is still pretty close but I think stress is more correct in my view I think stress is more correct because when something's stressful you it's hard it's hard to feel at ease Right, it's hard to feel at ease when something is stressful, when something's changing all the time, and you can't find stability. To me, that's stressful. It is suffering too, but it's also, but I think it's more succinct, succinctly stressful. Stressful, right? So the Buddha talks about perception as one of the five aggregates. Sanya as a as a perception, a sanya as perception as an aggregate, right? And sanya as being anicca dukkang anatta. So it's even not self. So these perceptions that we have every moment, you, know, you perceive, how many times you perceive someone to be something and you're wrong? And how many times you perceive, you think you know someone and then they do something completely out of character and you just don't know them anymore for a while. It's like, wow, right? Even yourself, even yourself. Like there's so many things I've done out of character and done that, uh, and that's because of growth, because it's called breaking, shattering the ignorance. Like you, <clears throat> you realize something and you get better, <clears throat> and that happens in trade too. In any development of skills, perception is not very useful, because you perceive you get stuck on a certain skill and it's hard to progress unless you break the borders of that skill. Of course, if the skill is very good. And you just keep improving and improving. But the, again, improvement doesn't stop. That's one thing I've noticed. Like, uh, you know, this uh, mentality that you get a degree or a master's degree and it's all over. The work stops. Or you get your you get your trade certificate and the work stops is, 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 is not true. It's like you get to the top of the mountain and you can just put your feet up and it stops. Well, I don't see anybody doing that. I don't see anybody doing that. Right. Um, so, <clears throat> thing is, that skills skills are forever developing, and perceptions are forever changing in a lot of ways because, uh, and and <clears throat> because because of these factors, because that your opinion of some, for example, I had a bad experience when I was a child, many bad experiences like everybody else, but you know, ten years later I'm upset. Now in my fifties, when I look at those experiences, I see them as life enriching. I see them as important, uh, important events. Actually, that um, I can reflect on and say, well, you know, it, it, they help me um, get, uh, regain humility. You know, I, I try to reach into the, the the humble pie of life, right? Even though at the time it made me angry and I was upset, but now I realize that some of those experiences were necessary. So even my perception on the on the on the most traumatic experience of I. Uh, um, I had now my perception is totally different so how do you count on a perception if it's changing all the time well the, th well, the idea is you don't believe in it if you follow the perception you become insane you get into the perception insanity as far as I'm concerned <laughs> like for example uh, when I first ordained as a monk and uh, I tried the sitters practice for five months and uh, so I didn't lay down for five months. And one day I was, I was 
meditating and I locked into a perception, of, I, a memory came up and I started talking to myself and uh, about this memory, right? And, and a whole conversation is going on in my mind, right? A whole conversation. I don't know how long it went on. It went for quite some time. Then suddenly something struck me and said, just open your eyes. Because I was feeling really stressed out. I was like, oh, it's just a memory. It's the past. What's going on? Right? And th that's part of Sanya, right? So I opened my eyes and there was nothing in the room and I'm staring at a wall because I was sitting in front of a wall. At that moment, I realized I'm insane. <laughs> I've improved a lot. But, you know, there's a saying, only the Arahant, only the Arahant has overcome insanity. Everybody else is insane. Why? Because we we still we still got ignorance. We, the mental effluence are still are still purging out of the body. Are still streaming out of the body, surging out surging out of the chitta into conscious into sankharas. The ignorance, right? Avijja is still streaming out these mental effluence, and we're still craving and clinging to things. So when you're straving, uh, when you're uh, clinging and craving things that are delusional, that's insanity. Only the Arahant has gone beyond that. So, but uh, I mean, I guess there's different levels of insanity, right? So, you know, if you listen to my videos, uh, I, I'm a self admitted insane monk. <laughs> but anyway, getting back on topic, right? A bit, of, a bit of laughter, you know, is helpful sometimes. But, you know, there's some truth to that too. Like, you know, I can't, you know, the arahant, the arahant is the one that has totally overcome, you know, the, the the craving and clinging, and has and has stopped all the mental influence, cut off all the defilements, and 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 totally has and wisdom has totally opened up in the chitta. The chitta has become pure. It's not dirty anymore. If the chitta, the chitta is infiltrated with with ignorance. Then you're not seeing things as they are. If you're not seeing things as they are, well. How many words are there that are more pleasant, I guess? I guess there's more words that are pleasant. There's words that are more pleasant, I guess. But uh, insanity is definitely one of them. So anyway, going back to that experience, I realized like this whole conversation about a memory, about a perception of a memory gave into my feeling and I started to get upset and I was stressing out. And it's something that happened when I was a very young teenager that it's over and there's nothing that can be helped. So... But, you know, I've had a lot of these, I'm just just bringing that at one example. There's many, there's many, there's lots of trauma. Everybody's gone through trauma. The problem, the, the, the problem with trauma is when you cling to it and you hold on to it and, and, and you just keep and you, you hold on to the perception of it rather than go into the silent, silent mind. It's hard to heal yourself if you can't do that, if you can't go beyond. So I've noticed that um, in a lot of people. Uh, you know, they're still holding on to these perceptions of memories or these memories and uh, still holding on to that trauma. The idea is to let it go by tuning into now, by directing the mind in a different direction. That's how you do it. It's not that it's not that you uh, erase it. It's that you direct the mind to something skillful, to more, to more, to us, to, let's say, uh, to a higher, uh, a, a higher destination, right? A more skillful higher destination that's more effective it's like you just concentrate on now like i did when when i was having that reliving that experience right i opened my eyes and there's nothing there and then i realized oh it's gone right but in my mind in the i guess in the intellectual realm in the memory in the sanya it's still there right and it's quite stressful so this is where the anicca dukkham anatta anatta helped me a lot <clears throat> helped me a lot at that time because then I recall it's not self, not self. And then I started to go into, uh, still still into it, the deep study of not self, right? And started to shed it. And then uh, developing sati, like I've explained in different video, in a few different videos already, is uh, abiding, not clinging to anything in the world, which includes the five aggregates. So this is how we heal ourselves, people. This is how we heal ourselves of um, insanity. So getting back to perception insanity, don't count on it. Don't believe it. Remember something, right? The reality, like if we go back to 
basic science. You know, the old, the old adage, sorry, uh, the old adage, right, that it's, it's an old psychology, psychological thing you learn, I guess, back in high school where ten, you, you ask 10 people, right, to draw a red elephant, right, on some grass, um, you know, eating some fruit off a tree, right? You get 10 people to draw it, okay? You, you don't let them what? You don't let them look at each other. You get 10 different drawings, right? So even what I'm saying, even the image, what I'm saying, 10 people are going to interpret it 10 different ways. And when you look at a photo, it depends, like a person, you know, uh, is looking at it straight on, a person is looking at it from an angle, that changes the perception dramatically. It really does. So this is why we have to be careful of perception about anything, about any news we hear, about any... I'm not talking about being skeptical and paranoid. I'm talking about being aware that that perception can lead to false outcomes, right, if we lock into the perception. So the, the idea is to try to look at something from a very wide angle, a 360-degree angle, which is very difficult. But what else is there? See, this is what I call due diligence. Like when we research something or when we study something or we're learning a skill, do you have 360-degree perception? Right? Have you done the 360 degrees of that perception on that subject? Have you investigated it to that degree? Because only then you can say that you've done it correctly, right? That you've done you've done your due diligence. And this is a big problem which comes with gossip and, and, and assumptions and and media, media reporting on an event is always inaccurate because there's always different sides of the story, right? So, but we get a general level of perception. You know, we, we kind of go into the general we go into the general rule rather than the specific rule, and we just, you know, go on with our lives. You know, so, but really, like when you're trying to become skillful at something and you're in that kind of development mode, right, where you're saying, okay, I want to get good at something or I want to learn about something, in, the subject needs to be studied at 360 degrees, right? So when you look at an elephant and you paint an elephant, if you want to become a good artist, what I would what I would uh, advise in this case, even for myself, because you look at the, you, you, you try to divide the angles of the elephant, you do a 360 degree angle. Very difficult, very time consuming, very meticulous. But imagine you do that. You look at the elephant from all different angles and you draw the elephant at each different angle. Right? Maybe you can break it down and do it from 180 degrees or, you know, Whatever, you do it from four areas or eight or ten, ten directions. It makes you become more skillful rather than just looking at the elephant from one direction, from one angle, right? It'll make you a more skillful uh, artist, right? So you look at it from every angle, right? Or any, like an apple, um, like in the old days, um, you know, you used to learn art by drawing an apple or a pear or a leaf. Yeah, you look at it from more different angles. And then your perception starts to become, I guess, more accurate. But even then, perception is dangerous because perception is not wisdom. Because perception is still a part of the inbuilt mechanism of the five aggregates of the human being. And that's a that's a big bone to chew. Big bone to chew because the 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 perception is part of the human apparatus which helps us survive. But it's not part of wisdom. It's not part of chitta. Chitta, there's no perception in chitta. How's that? In pure mind, there's no perception. <laughs> That's a big one. That's a big one to chew, but it's but it is it is what it is, right? So may you not be perception insanitized, if that even makes any sense. So anyway, I think uh I think I'm done today. Yeah, may you grow in Dharma.